So today we are going to learn about attributes. Attributes and extended attribute. Can any one of you tell us what is attribute? Anyone? Attributes such as uh, first name, last name, email, phone number, address. Correct. These are attributes. Correct. So attribute is nothing. Attributes all about placeholder where we can store some data. Like in the moment we are going to manage all user information, definitely we should create some place to store the value. From sale point perspective, I'm saying, not from database perspective. If you are going to create database inside the database, if you're going to store the data, then definitely you are going to call it as a column, not as an attribute, correct? Because we will create one table, specific table, where we will create columns and index. Inside those columns, we will store the data when it comes to database. But in save point also, we have to store the data right from front end. So in that scenario, attributes we can introduce and we can store all the values, not only identity value, not only employee, information we can store all kind of information so wherever you are going to store some data in sale point you may call it as attribute you can okay that's why i said attributes are nothing it's like a placeholder where you can store all the values so what is extended attribute so extended attributes are nothing so whatever attributes came as a default you may call it as standard attributes or out of the box attribute, whatever attribute you are going to create as per the requirement, which means you are doing some customization. So you may call it as extended attribute. Okay. So today we will learn how to create these extended attribute. Because once in a while you will came across this requirement as a developer, and you definitely you should know how to create these attribute. Because based on these attribute values, attribute field value, you are going to write a lot of rules. Let's take an example. Um, you are planning to do certification. Maybe you want to exclude Singapore based location employee. Okay. So in that scenario, based on location attribute, you are going to write some rule. You will write if employee belongs to this location. So don't add them in the certification, like if condition. So we can apply. So with the help of attributes, we can do a lot. Are we clear so far? So whenever you get requirement to create any extended attribute, you have to follow these steps. First, make sure attributes are defined. In the Hibernet file. I'll tell you what is Hibernet file later. Second, make sure from sale point front end, we are going to store the value. Those values will store under database, isn't it? Of course, yes. So the moment, because sale point has its own database. So definitely sale point has a lot of tables to store the data and columns will be there. So now we are going to create new attribute. Let's take an example, employee start date, because out of the box, we don't have that attribute. So based on employee start date, we can do a lot of activities like join, trigger joiner event to provide birth rate access, a lot of things. So now we need to introduce that attribute so that we can perform our day-to-day -day activities. The moment we are going to create employee start date extended attribute, a similar way it should store inside the database as well, right? So we should make sure column has been created. So who will perform this activity in real-time project? DBA. Can't we do that? The DBA, database administrator. Exactly, DBA will do, but can't we do this activity? I guess we can do it in the sale point, but uh, not sure if we have permissions to do it in the database or the applications. Mm. We don't have permissions most of the time, so we can't. We have to rely on database team only. Okay. So third step, attributes needs to be 
define in the um, global settings. Global settings identity mapping. Okay, so these three steps needs to be followed whenever you get requirement. Identity. Okay. So here we have username, first name, last name, email, manager type. So these are the predefined attribute in SailPoint for all identities, correct? So you may call it as out of the box attribute or you can call it as uh, standard attribute, okay? In different projects, they will use the different terminology. Sometimes they will call it as out of the box attribute. Sometimes they will call it a standard attribute. So now here, I'm going to add a couple of attributes like employee start date, employee end date, um, employee department, location, region, phone number, position ID. So whatever attributes are required based on the business requirement, we can add over here. So whatever attributes you are going to create, you may call it as extended attribute or customized attribute. And if any attributes, it may be out of the box attribute, it may be extended attribute. If any attributes are related to identity, then you can call it as identity attribute as well. Got it? If any attributes are related to application, then you may call it as application attribute, application extended attribute. So in similar way, we can create attributes for nine type of identity objects, including identities, application, entitlement for roles certification and uh, accounts for accounts also you can create apart from that you can create for server and two more attribute uh, two more identity object so totally you can create attributes extended attribute for nine type of identity object so try to remember these points key points so are we clear Okay, so now uh, we'll create extended attribute for identity, where else? So can you name out few attributes which needs to be created for identities? Any one of you? So till type is there, we have to create a couple of attributes, extended attribute for identity. Can you you had, attribute uh, name? As you mentioned, the start date, end date, uh title uh okay phone number phone number yeah so address do you guys want to learn how we are performing this uh requirement in real time project because we have a shortcut too what is it again? Where to learn it from where? Okay, so now we are going to create extended attribute, right? Yes. My question was, so do you want to learn how we are supposed to create in real time project environment or do you want to learn the shortcut how to create? Well, both, I guess. Let's put an example of both, you know, where we can create a, uh, real time environment, which is that's what no, help us. First, let me projects. talk about the easiest way, which we shouldn't follow in real time project. Okay, okay. So which means mm -hmm. I have shown three steps, right? The first two steps we are going to skip, which means we are not going to update the attribute in the Hibernate file. We are not going to ask DB team to create the column. Correct. So instead of we can skip two steps and we can pop, we can follow the third step directly. So to do that. Let me take control. Guys, don't get confused. This is the first method which we shouldn't follow in real time project. So go to global settings, go to identity mapping directly. So here we can add attributes, whatever attributes are required. 
Okay, so can you write? Can you type? Mahmoud? Yeah. Uh, phone number. Okay. Display is a phone number, correct? The same thing? Mm, same thing you can. And yeah. you guys should know the difference between attribute name and display name. Okay. Stiff. Yes. But the uh, what I'm they are different. Like start date is a is a is a, a numeric. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. Okay, add fine. a new attribute saying escalation manager. So new attribute hypothetically add it escalation manager. Okay, so you have added four attributes here, right? Which means you have directly followed the third step. Now, can you go to identity and validate whether you are able to see? Uh, go to identity barrows, pick any one identity. Go here, yes. identity. Correct, identity barrows. Pick any one identity. See the, the extended attribute which we created, it's not appearing here. Whether you are following the simple way or the real-time project method, when it comes to identity, you have to follow the fourth step. The fourth step is nothing. You have to go to the debug page. From there, you have to do some customization. You have to add these attributes. Until unless you are going to follow the fourth step, you cannot create extended attribute for identities. I would say only for identities as far as I remember. For other object type like application, entitlement, roles, certification, <laughs> accounts, so third step is enough. Till third step is enough. Okay, the fourth step we will follow now. To follow the fourth step, go to debug page. So from here, UI configuration. Here you have to type identity view attribute. The file is too large, so it will take time usually. Yeah. So whatever attributes you have added, so can uh, can you add the same here also? Yeah. Better oh, you can do the copy paste just a minute. So just go to global setting, identity mapping. It's from here like start date, ma uh, escalation manager. Just do the copy paste. Just copy the value and paste over there. You should always copy the attribute name. I mean attribute yeah. value. Yeah. Now go to the next tab. So after administrator, add comma, don't add space. Yeah, is the value. So the address? Yes, okay. Oh, should we just? No, 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 no we didn't add that. Add escalation okay. manager and address, phone number. Start date, address.
That's all I think. Remove right? the space. Yeah. yeah. Click save. Okay. Now go to identity. Identity warehouse. Open any identity. See? All four attributes, extended attributes are appearing here. This is the easiest method of creating attributes, but we shouldn't follow this method in real time project. It will create a problem. So guys, we have created these attributes here, but what about the database where all the values are going to store? That's an issue. Yeah, because it's not it's created in the identity, but it's not in the database. Anyone? Arvinder? Lawrence, Shivraj, Baiba, Sani, you guys are able to understand? Yes, Rakesh. Yes, sure. Rakesh. Yeah. Okay. So now my question is, we have created these attributes. Now we are going to store some value. But what about the database columns? I mean, is the value where, where all, all, of, all of these values is going to store? Okay, here you have to consider two things. So the attribute creation in real-time project, most of the time, it will, the extended attribute will be created while implementing the sale point. Okay, which means while installing sale point, they will follow one more, they will add one more step where all extended attributes will be created. Okay. So we won't create this extended attribute very often. So point number two, once you have created this extended attribute using the easiest method in the column, whatever columns are available, like extended one, two, three columns will be there. Can you open MySQL workbench? Let me show you. Yeah, can you go to the identity IQ database and SPT underscore identity table? Sure. Okay, well, let me, let me do that. No. See here we have SPT underscore identity table. Just expand that column. Here we have extended one to 10, right? So these columns will be empty as of now. So whatever attributes you have created using the third step directly. So a, those values will get stored automatically in any one of these columns from extended one to 10. Okay. So now we will learn how we are supposed to create this extended attribute in real time project. So th this method here is the real time rather than what we did earlier. No, this is the easiest method, which we shouldn't follow. We shouldn't do this in real time project because okay. first we will make sure the attributes has been updated in the Hibernate file. Second, whenever we are going to execute in the database, I mean, whenever we are going to update in the column in the database, so the column will be created. So third step we can follow. Got it? Okay. Okay, so guys, forgot about this easiest method, easier, easiest method. Now we will learn. As I said, first step, we have to update the attribute name in the Hibernate file. So we will create for entitlement catalog. Okay, let's say I'm going to add new entitlement here. We have a requirement to add a couple of additional attribute, like whether this attribute is a privileged entitlement or not, who will be the owner privileged entitlement owner. So we have to add two more attributes here, two more attributes. Okay, one is privileged entitlement, yes or no. It's kind of Boolean value. Checkbox should be there. Second, privileged entitlement owner. From the drop down, identity value should appear. So the respective owner identity we can choose and we can save. That's our requirement. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So we have to create attribute for entitlement. So the first step, We will go to the Hibernate file. How to go there? First, go to your server. Go go to the folder where you have installed, where you have deployed your application, application server and application. Go to Identity IQ, WebINF, Classes, 
sale point object here you could see we have nine type of identity object so we can create extended attribute for alerts usually we won't do that application bundle you guys know what is bundle certification item identities link link is nothing it's account so managed attribute means it's entitlement so you can create for server and target so based on the requirement you have to choose the file and you have to modify so now i'm going to create two extended attribute for entitlement so i'll pick this file and one major key point guys whenever you are going to modify these hibernate file make sure you have taken a backup because if you are going to add one extra comma or full stop so your production environment will be down production or dev queue or whatever environment your sale point application will be down basically so make sure you have taken a backup of this file this file is very important we shouldn't touch very often so now i'm going to take a i'll take a backup of this file I will edit this Hibernate file now. Okay. So I have to explain before how to update this file. So let me choose this. First, I will explain, and after that, we will open the respective cabinet file. Okay. So, guys, by default, 10 attributes will be there. 10 extended attributes will be there. You can map. Okay. If you want to increase maximum of 20, we can increase without any issue. If you want to introduce new attributes more than 20, then you have to add this line called extended property accessor you have to add if the attribute count is going to be more than 20 definitely you should add so i would suggest whether it's less than 20 or more than 20 don't worry add this line blankly so this extended property access is nothing it's something like this you have to add you have to add this line line number 70. whenever you are going to create new attribute you have to add this blindly Okay, second, um, all data type. I mean, you are going to create attributes. The purpose, you can store some value. The data type could be string. The data type could be integer, Boolean, correct? Whatever it may be. Maybe you are going to store only numbers. You are going to store only some words, some values, correct? Or maybe it will be a checkbox like yes or no, true or false kind of thing. Whatever data type it may be. So in the Hibernate file, you have to declare the attribute as a string. The attribute data type should be as declared should be as string. And the virtual value, so based on your SQL server or MySQL, so these many characters you can, the virtual you can create. But 400, 500 is enough. So this is how we are going to create new extended attribute. So just copy this property. And we can add. Are we clear? I don't know what, what, what did you do. Just copy, uh, copy it. You know, don't you have to define it? No, we have to define it. But Number. we have opened this identity file, right? But our okay, requirement, yes. we are going to create it for entitlement. So we have to pick other file, other hibernate file. So uh -huh. to get a better understand, I have to explain, right? So you know, you should know what is property name, what is the data type. Let's mm -hmm. say here we are going to create an attribute called employee start date. Start date means mm -hmm. we cannot enter any character. I mean, we cannot mention any uh, alphabetic character, right? We are going to mention numeric character when it comes yes. to start date or end date. So in that scenario, mm -hmm. if you are going to declare the data type as string, then it should be integer, right? Integer, yeah. But here in the Hibernate file, we have to declare it as a string, even though it's an integer value. That's what I'm trying to explain. One, two if you are going to introduce more than 20 extended attribute you yes. have to 
add this extended property accessor line, which means I was referring this line number 70. We have to add inside each and every attribute. Are we clear? Because this is very important. Let's say you forgot to add this line. Your environment will be down. You cannot access your application, sale point application. If it is a real-time project, definitely P1 will be raised immediately. Bridge call will be open. You have to involve because of your small mistake. So don't forget this. So that's why I would say whether it's less than 20 attributes, more than 20 attributes, don't think, don't count. Blindly add this line. It's not going to cause anything. But up to nine uh, attributes, we don't have to add it. Yes. As per the document, we don't need to add. But we are not sure, right? So whether how many attributes exactly they have created in the backend. We got a requirement to create a couple of attributes, one or two maybe. We are not sure. I mean, how many attributes already declared? Maybe in the Hibernate file, it's not showing. Directly, they have created in sale point. The reason could be anything. So that's why I would say, whether it's less than 20 or more than 20, don't think about it. Just add this line blind. Okay. So now we will choose the right file, right Hibernate file called managed attribute. And now we are going to introduce those attributes. See. Okay. So instead of extended one, you can mention your attribute name. Privileged entitlement are not correct. So the data type will be string, length will be 450 characters enough. It depends on your server, whether it's MySQL, MSQL, it depends. So what is index? Do we have anyone from database team here? Can somebody tell us what is index? Index are nothing. We are going to create a couple of attributes like privileged entitlement, privileged owner, whoever it may be. These attributes will be used by business people, end user for searchable purpose. Let's say business has something, some activity. They want to filter all the privileged entitlement. So they are going to search all the entitlement with the help of this privileged entitlement attribute, what we are going to create. So in that scenario, this attribute is going to act, this will act as a searchable. In that scenario, we have to declare an index so that the value will be fetched from the database as fast as possible. So if the attribute is going to use for searchable purpose, then we have to create index automatically. So whenever before getting these requirements from stakeholder, you should make sure uh, whether this attribute we are going to use it for searchable purpose or not. If yes, then we have to create index or else it's not required. So privileged entitlement is a name. So we can replace so that the new index will be created. That's it. So let me add one more attribute. The next one, privileged entitlement owner. Okay, so that's it. So I have added two attributes in the Hibernate file. So let me save this. So the first step is done. We have added the attribute in the Hibernate file. Second, we have to make sure that in the database, in the respective table, we have got, we have created a column so that we can store this value. Correct. So if it is a real time, you can take a snapshot of this Hibernate file. You can send it to your DBA, database administrator or database team, and you can ask them to create the column, respective column. They will do it on their own. But since here we don't have any DB team, we have to create on our own so that we can learn a lot. So first. You should know how to create the table. So you can Google it. If you know how to write the query, just Google it and create the columns. Column means I was referring this. So let's go to SPT underscore managed attribute table. 
expand the column. So till target ID. Oh, sorry, not this one. I have opened the wrong table. SPT managed attribute. Till assigned scope is there. Now we are going to add two more columns here. So if you know the query to write, yeah, you can create on your own. If you're not sure, if you're not from DB team, if you're not sure how to write the query, then we have another way. You can go to bin folder. I mean, you can open command prompt and change the path to bin folder. which means go to this bin folder, open command prompt. So from here, you have to type IAQ extended schema. In the first session, I mean, in the installation chapter, I have told if the DB query is not there to create the database. So we have to use the command call IAQ schema so that the DB queries will be generated. Do you remember that? Do you recall? Yes, so IAQ schema was the command, correct? To generate the DB query so that we can create the database. So in a similar way, we have another command called IAQ extended schema. Yes, should be in the uppercase. The character yes should be in the uppercase. So it will generate the script for extended attributes as well. So S is capital you have. Maybe yes. It's a no, it should be in the capital only. Extend. Okay, there is a spelling mistake. Extended schema. So it will generate the query for extended attributes. Now you can go to web in a folder, database folder. Here you could see some new four file has been generated with today's timestamp, current timestamp, 16th of November, 9.37 PM. So you can choose your respective one, respective file, MySQL one. <clears throat> Open with notepad. So we are going to deal with managed attribute. So this is managed attribute. Here you could see from line number, 71 to 74. So we are going to alter the table called managed attribute. So then we can add the privileged entitlement column. Correct. And we will create the index for that also. And similar way, we are going to create another table called privileged entitlement owner. Where we will create the index for that. So now let's execute this query directly on the workbench or maybe you can execute this file directly also. So let me show you that. First, we will execute the first line. Yeah, it got completed successfully. Now I'm going to refresh the column. So here you could see one new column has been created, privileged and title, correct? Mm -hmm. So let me create another column. done see privileged entitlement privileged entitlement owner both the column has been created which means we can store the value so now we will create index which means this index so index is nothing it's usable for i mean this index will be used if you want to search any information very fast if you want to fetch any information so we have created the index as well. So two index has been created. Privileged entitlement, entitlement owner. So first two step has been done, correct? We have completed both the step. The third step, guys, if you didn't understand anything, if you want to clarify anything, ask me, I'll explain. Could have done them at the one step, you know, just highlight all of them and execute. Come again? 
I said you could have done just highlight all of them and execute, you know. Yeah, we could have done that. Yeah, okay. No. I have done one by one so that I can show it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then we will follow the third step. So we'll go to global setting. As usual, here I can global setting. So now which tab we have to choose? For identities, we have to choose identity mapping, correct? For entitlement. Entitlement category attributes. Hmm? Entitlement catalog attributes. For link? For link attribute? No, it says entitlement catalog attributes. Yes, Is yes, that... yes. For entitlement, yeah, we can choose that. That's right. But what about entitlement role? Where oh. are we going to add? For account, for application. For account, you should choose this account mapping for application attribute. You have to choose this application extender attribute for roles. You have to choose this. Okay. So now let's add those attribute here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mahmoud, you can add the new attribute. So don't do the copy paste. I mean, don't write manually. Just do the copy paste from the Hibernate file. From where? From uh, the file here? No, Hibernate file. Yeah. So just copy the property name and paste over there. Just this here? Yes. Um, here? Yes. You paste it here? Correct. So maybe display name you can. It's for end user, right? Business people. You can write it in the proper case. What's that? Description? I was referring the display name. Oh, what is it? Should I write? Yeah, just this... type in the proper case. Or maybe you can make the changes. Oh. Okay. So in between privileged and entitlement, can you space? Okay. Click save now. Okay, another one. Is that okay? That's true. Yes. So now go to entitlement and validate whether these attributes are appearing or not. So we have created attribute for uh, entitlement, right? So we should go to entitlement catalog, not identities. What is that? Uh... Uh, Mahmoud, you have open identities, right? But we should open entitlement. Go to application. Trying to add new entitlement. So here you could see privileged entitlement and privileged entitlement owner, correct? So irrespective of all application, so these are, let me take control. Irrespective of all application, so these attributes will appear. So now we have to feed some value. How to do that? We cannot store any value right now. Anybody? Imagine I got a requirement to create a new entitlement. Yeah, I can feed all the values. But what about this privileged entitlement and privileged owner? 
it's grayed out, right? We cannot define any values over here. Okay, so before we get into that, guys, are we clear how to create any extended attribute for that nine type of objects? If yes, then we'll proceed further. Because we have to talk about how to define these values for high identities, how to map the value. If you didn't understand, I'll explain one more time. Maybe we can give a try tomorrow how to assign these can values. One more time, I don't relate. Yeah, Maria. So, um, yeah, Mahmoud, can you stop sharing your screen? Let me share. Fine. So, Mariam, whenever we get requirement, we get a requirement from stakeholder to create any extended attribute, we have to follow these three steps. The first step, we have to update in the Hibernate file, as we did. I have explained, right? So, we have to add the uh, attribute name in the property name field. We have to declare what type of objects we are going to store. Irrespective of data type, we have to declare string. The data type should be string. And the character and index we have to mention. So the index means if you are going to use this attribute for searchable purpose, let me open the Hibernate file also so that I can explain. So go, if you want to access the Hibernate file, you have to go to WebINF classes. Sale point object. Here we have. So let's open this. Okay, here I don't have any attribute declared. Okay, no worries. I'll explain this. So in the property name, Mariam, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So in the property name, we have to mention the attribute name. Data type, always it will be string. Length 450 characters is enough. And index, if you are going to use this extended one attribute, maybe it will be location, department, whatever attribute name. If you are going to use it for searchable purpose, then we have to declare index or else it's not required. Second, if you are going to have more than 20 extended attribute, as I said, we have to add one more line called access equals sale point dot persistence. Something will be there. I will show you again. We have to add that. So this is how we are going to update the Hibernate file. First step. Second, the moment we created these attributes, we are going to store some value. So in the database also, these values should store right. So to fulfill that, we have created a columns and index. If you know how to write the query, directly you can write. If you are not sure, then we have to generate those scripts. So to do that, we have gone to bin folder. We have access, open the command prompt. From there, we have typed the command called IAQ space extended schema. And yes, should be in the uppercase. Okay. Once you hit the enter button, the script will be generated. And I have shown some queries were there, right? So the, that query we have executed in the MySQL workbench so that the column and index work, uh, were created. So that's the second step. Third step. So third step, go to gear icon, go to global setting. Depend on the object type. You have to choose the mapping value or attributes, and you have to introduce the new attribute from here as well. So this is what we have done so far. You got it? No. Okay, got it. Okay. What about other folks? <clears throat> okay, I'll take that as no. How come you don't have any values, Mahmoud? Okay, yesterday we have executed this task called prune identity cubes and it deleted 10,192 identities. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you have that application now? Okay. 
they should need data right okay. to perform this identity for mapping do you have that auth employees one do you yeah. have that speed apps app have the file it's uh, yeah it's in here yeah yeah that's right. fine that's fine okay 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 yeah you have that app that's it yeah. just a minute let me take control again we need user right to perform so i'll go to acme hr application i will replace the file We go to schema, discover schema attribute, employee ID, I will declare. With the task now. Hmm? You can execute the task, is it? Um, Mohammed, I couldn't hear you. Hello? I said what? execute the task. You're going to have to execute yes, yes, the task. Yes, we have now. to execute the task. We have to save this yeah. application and we have to execute the task. So, where did you save this, no? No, it didn't save, I think. Yeah, now it got saved. We'll go to setup, task. New task. HR application execute. Okay. Mm. We we'll create the identities so that we can perform our identity mappings. We have created a couple of attributes, right? Extended attributes. Now go to identity warehouse. Yeah, we have a lot of identities. So one year. Here we have username. Today we have created start date, phone number, escalation manager address, a lot of values. So now for this identity, first name value should appear. This identity got created from this HR application account aggregation, correct? In the account section, you could see with the first name value, last name value, every values you can see because this account value will be updated via aggregation task. So this is target application property. You should consider this is a target application property. This is save point property. So here we don't have first name value. So we have to declare, as I already said, sale point will rely on the trusted source. It should be genuine data. So we can consider HR application is going to be the trusted source as always. So now go to where I can global settings, go to identity mapping. So you have to choose your respective attributes so that you can assign the values. First name is the attribute. Click on the add source from which source we are going to get the field value. So as I said, we have to rely on the trusted source, right? So you can choose the HR application. So HR application has these column like cost center, department, email ID. First name. Correct. So you can have to choose first name from here. So this is application attribute, not identity attribute. Click yes. add. Click save. Yes. Click save. Why we are getting that error? <clears throat> okay, first name got updated. In a similar way, I'm going to update last name also. For Acme HR application for last name. So now escalation manager. Okay, so we have a business requirement, specific business requirement, um, where escalation manager will be set some identity. Okay, so you cannot add source from HR application in this scenario. So to do that, you have to write some rule. 
okay whichever identity got aggregated from this hr application which means whatever identities has been created from this application this rule will be appear if you want to define based on the application because full time employee will have one specific application for contractor employee will have specific application if you want to define any rule based on the application you can choose this application rule or else you can use this global rule whatever rule we are going to create here it will applicable for all the identities simply so nothing i'm going to simply write one rule i'm going to return one identity call sp admin so sp admin will act as a manager escalation manager in this scenario so rule name we have to mention escalation manager so just say the rule will get created escalation manager is the rule name click add so whenever if you want to pop up any field value escalation manager this rule will get execute that's it save so we have provided three field values right it got saved now go to identity identity warehouse just refresh it's not appearing here why why it's not appearing so we can add address also so from hr application select location maybe or region click save okay we have updated this attribute but it's not reflecting here because we have to execute couple of uh, some task the task name is refresh identity queue maybe i have said it or not i'm not i don't remember exactly identity queue is nothing from here to here you may call it as the entire area you may call it as identity queue okay identity warehouse is a repository where all identity information will be there the moment you are going to choose one particular identity so the entire area you can call it as identity queue so we have to refresh the identity queue here we have a lot of arguments so based on the requirement you have to check uncheck and you can execute so our requirement is we have to refresh all the identity attributes identity attribute means this one so check that box and execute this save and execute so it got updated now go to identity warehouse refresh again so here you could see first name last name escalation manager and address all four values got updated correct yes sir Are we clear? Sani, Maryam, Shelton, Vibo, Arvind. Yep. So now you know what is global rule, what is application rule, and from application, from respective application, we can choose this field. And always remember, this is sale point property, guys. So based on these value, event will get triggered. Based on these value, we are going to write a lot of rules, customization rules. So this is application property. Via aggregation, all information will be updated here, not here. not in the sale point property except for hr application if hr application is going to update any value it will reflect here definitely let's say two email id has been created or some address has been changed the department has been changed so definitely it will update in the hr application so via hr application here it will get update already we have done the identity mapping using the hr source right so it will update here as well okay and this method is applicable only for identities not for entire one and not for other object type okay so mahmud can you go to entitlement new entitlement add new entitlement right to run catalog hmm? yeah yes click on add new entitlement 
the same extender attribute we have created. But when it comes to identity, most of the time we have to rely on HR source. But entitlement attribute or roles, it depends on the application team value. Whatever value they are going to provide, we have to choose here. As I said, so these field values should be enabled to provide some data. So to do that, can you open a new tab? No, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. No worries. So go to gear icon, global setting. So entitlement catalog attribute. So from here, make sure these attributes should be editable. So enable this checkbox. It should be editable. Now go ahead and refresh. See, now here you can set some, you can provide some value. Yeah. Let's choose track application. If we are not able to edit, why? I'm selected as editable. Now we are able to edit. Got it? So now, first let's start with privileged entitlement. So we should know whether this entitlement is a privileged entitlement or not, which means it's kind of yes or no, true or false, which comes under Boolean. So from here, you can change your data type. Instead of string, you can change it to Boolean. Click save. I'll go ahead and refresh. See, now it's a checkbox. Got it? So based on your requirement, you can modify. So second, the same privileged entitlement. If you're going to use this attribute for searchable purpose, in the database, we have to create index. And even from here also, we have to enable. So we'll talk about that later. So for this attribute, privileged entitlement owner, we should make sure all the identities should appear, right? So in that scenario, you can change the data type as identity and click save. So from here, all identities will be appear from the dropdown. So now I can save this value and it will store in the database and save one. Got it? You, can, you cannot save it though. Can you save it? Oh, because first we have to select the application, right? Okay. So from which application, which email. Okay, so this is a privileged entitlement and this person will act as a, Aaron Nichols will act as a. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So new entitlement got created with this value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about other type. So apart from Boolean string identity, I have a question. So in this entitlement, don't we have any value? Okay. So now this should be mandatory field. This attribute value, this field should be a mandatory. This attribute should be a mandatory field. Without providing any information here, we cannot save. We are not, we are not allow end user to save this. We shouldn't allow. So 
how to make this attribute as a mandatory field anybody so in that scenario data type should be string because only data type string has this field value called required required means it's mandatory one now go to new entitlement save this so here you could see says star mark is there which means it's a mandatory field like application type attribute apart from that so you guys know based on the requirement you can change it to integer if you want to appear any date like we have attribute called entitlement creation date So just refresh this. See here we have entitlement creation date and we can allow the business people to select the date from here. So these are the out of the box feature what we have in sale point. Yeah guys, that's all that these kind of changes we can perform. If you want to appear, show any rule or date, Boolean value, checkbox, string identity, yeah are we clear yes so yes. okay so let's talk about the searchable purpose so go to intelligence go to advanced analytics okay so change the type as entitlement because since we have created two attributes right so these are the standard attributes like owner value application type everything we have created two attributes and we have instructed this attribute is going to act as a searchable it will be used for searchable purpose, correct? Now, those attributes are not appearing here. If you want to appear them here, then open these attributes and declare them as a searchable. See? We have declared both the attribute, correct? Isn't it? But only one app appearing here. Why? Because the other one is integer. So we have declared here it's appearing privileged entitlement owner. So which means this one is appearing. The entitlement creation date, it's not appearing. Why? Even though we declare this as a searchable. Okay, this is one of the bug. I would say bug or maybe not what we I have seen in sale point. We have declared this attribute for searchable purpose, but it's not appearing. What should we do now? Change the type, I guess. Instead of date or... <clears throat> if you came across this issue, uh, you have to go to debug page. This is the solution. Okay, whatever attributes we are going to create from GUI, from front end, if you want to access them from the back end, what will be the object type we are going to choose? Is it going to be attribute? No. Under no, attribute? No. Identity? Oh, no. Okay, never mind. Hmm? Um, is it uh, identity something? I don't know. No. Don't so we have to access all type of attributes. So we have to choose object config. Object config is the object name. Now you have to choose for which object uh, you are going to deal with these attributes. I have a question. How do I know which object to look for? I mean, uh, it's, it's... So based on the experience you are going to learn. We don't have such documents. Okay. Okay. So that's why I'm, whenever I'm talking about any chapter, so I'll try to explain from front end and DB both. I mean, the object browser, debug page. So now we have created attribute for entitlement. So you have to choose managed attribute. Here you could see from line number four to, I, could, I couldn't see. Okay, from line number four to six, here we have privileged entitlement, what we have added. From line number seven to nine, privileged entitlement owner, correct? So now, I think which one is not appearing? Uh... Yes. 
privileged entitlement is not appearing owner is appearing correct yeah from 7 num 7 to 9 you can ignore from line number 4 to 5 4 to 6 here before before after name you have to type named column equal equal true so this is going to be the fix if it is not appearing then you have to add something like this named column is equal to true what is that a bug in the system or what i don't know i i shouldn't say that i shouldn't call it as a bug but when we faced this issue in real time project we reached vendor team and after the we came to know we have to add something like this mm -hmm. so we have added named column is equal to true right now save this now go to entitlement select again maybe refresh even though it's not appearing it should appear maybe before name is I'm making some mistake what did you execute it you saved no, it no, no, just a minute let me close name named column is equal to true let me add before name named column is equal to true save now we'll go to advanced analytics access review okay enter okay even though it's not appearing so apart from this we have to check okay the data type should be string now refresh now it's appearing okay you got it Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how we can map the value. We can define some value for entitlement or application, roles, certification, accounts. Okay, but for identity, we but, will get the but, fetch the value from identities. In this case, maybe maybe it didn't appear because of it's, it's a date, it's an integer. Exactly, it's a data string. type. Maybe it's data yeah. type. If you are selecting string, even though it's not appearing, then you have to add named column is equal to true. Yeah, if it's not appearing, but that yeah. it didn't appear this time, maybe because it was set to date. You know, the, the integer, uh, integer rather than uh, yeah, the the data, the data type yeah. was defined as date. That's why maybe it could be a reason. It could be the reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, that's all about extended attribute. As much as I can cover, I have covered everything. So if you have any question, anything you would like to clarify, we can. Okay, it's not particular to this topic, but uh, coming to the yeah. track application. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. We can. See, uh, for track, we have uh, mentioned the owner as a different ID, right? It, it yes. Of uh, SP admin. Hmm. So uh, when we request access from the uh, end user it will be going into that owner who is having like right here this particular 00 okay if you don't mind shani can you share your screen yeah one yeah sure yeah ma'am you can stop sharing yeah is it with Yes, it's visible. So, 
I'm logging into the user. Okay. Wait. So he uh, raised an access request, and if you see that track, my request. Mm. So uh, here I have. You have first denied. Three, yeah, three entitlements, input super approved. Yeah, but uh, previously, the administrator is not a uh, owner. Mm. So that's why I have cancelled here. Okay. Here Okay, who is the owner for this? Owner. IA. Owner to one A. Okay. A to A. Okay. So, can he uh, approve these requests? Do, yeah, do he can approve. Have... Okay. You have to but... log in as one A to A. Yeah. For, so, for that, uh, he needs to have credentials, right? The password. Right. So, how to get the credential? That's your question. Is that your question? Yeah. So, there are two ways. One thing i have created a creation rule but it is not working okay can you log in as sp admin first yeah so you have created a creation rule to set the password i believe yeah yes for so the all password the will be executed while creating the identity once the identity got created the rule won't execute i mean the password won't be set so this is the out of the box feature you got it not clear. Okay, let me explain. Let me take control. Let's talk about the rule first. Yeah. You have created this rule, right? Creation yeah. rule. Yes. Let me have a look. So you have import identity object and you have set the password, QRT, right? Yeah. It's fine. But now the question is, Identity is the class. Yeah, everything is right. So have you select this rule while aggregating the data first time? Because the password will be defined in the first time only. First time aggregation. No, no. In Next the time first time, I didn't, I didn't create a rule for the okay. first time. Then do one thing. Offboard this application, onboard it again, and set this password before running the first aggregation, first time aggregation. Okay. Okay. So, so the password will be set. So manually, what I have done is for one second. Can you start? go to yeah. the IA? One A. Yes. One A. One Maybe. A. Oh, okay. Maybe you can, so for, you know, right? You can set, yeah. uh, change the password from here also. Yeah. Here, change password. So yes. for this particular ID, I have given a manually. Mm. So I just opened this account and I have raised a request. So now okay. if you want to approve the work item, you have to, 1A2A is the approver, right? You have to change his password yeah. and you yes. have to log in as a 1A2A. So what's the difference between this owner having, a, actually he is not an administrator, right? How can he give an approval? No, in Did sale point, each and every identity can act as an approver. Whether they are a basic user or administrator, it doesn't, it doesn't consider. Anybody can act as approver if their name is going to define in the role as a owner in the role or entitlement or application. So they will the respective person will act as a approver. You got it? Yes. So for any target that designation. Yes. So the target application can have an administrator as an owner and any user as identity as an owner, right? It depends. Like, Whatever identity is username they want us to select, we will select and that particular person will act as an approver, irrespective of their nature of job or designation. They may be vice president, they may be normal user. They can act okay. as an approver. Okay. 